Alrighty, all you awesome composite photographers. Today I have a really awesome tutorial for you and I'm gonna show you how I liquefy the eyes but do it realistically. All right, so before we get started on that, let me show you. Go to my website, photillustrator.com. Check out some of the goodies that I have over here in galleries and resources, good things like that. Also, like my uh, Facebook page, at Photillustrator, and definitely follow me on Instagram, at Photillustrator. Want to get those Instagram followers up. By the way, this dude here, Cody Murph, the beard dude is in my gallery. Uh, just check out the editorial gallery and you'll see this awesome looking dude with the beard. Only wish I could get something even close to that. Anyway, can't do it. Let's get on with today's tutorial of liquefying eyes. All right, so we're gonna do a couple of uh, samples here for you. Uh, we're gonna start here with the recent, eh, not so recent, uh, foot illustration or the composite that I did of Rick Fairless in his Stroker's universe. Uh, he is a legend in the motorcycle industry, builds amazing choppers like the one he's sitting on. Uh, so we're gonna talk about this guy here. I'm gonna show you a little bit on this guy, which is this guy here. Also, Henry here, which is going to be featured in an upcoming composite of a family portrait that I'm working on. And then also Titan here, which is a dog from an last year's uh, portrait that I did with a family that had three Great Danes. Uh, we're gonna bring him over to here. Actually, we're gonna do a little bit more than we did here, just to show you the samples. So anyway, let's start off with this guy, right her. So I go through a definite process of, uh, you know, editing them. Sometimes I'll do frequency separation to remove the bags under the eyes or any darkness under the eyes. I also enlarge the heads a little bit. I do a lot of different things to um, before I actually do the liquefying of the eyes. Liquefying of the eyes uh, isn't the first thing I do, but definitely isn't the last thing I do. All right, so let's get into this bad boy right now. So we're gonna go up to uh, filter. We're gonna go to liquefy. This should be a rather quick tutorial today. Of course, none of my tutorials are that quick. So I bring it way up. All right, so here's a couple of things about the eyes. All right, we gotta make sure that we understand. First, we wanna pick the uh, warp tool here. So a couple of things about the eyes. Anytime that you liquefy anything, especially the eyes, because you're gonna see it in the eyes, Anytime you liquefy them, you're going to degrade the image, all right? So you have to be very careful and limit your liquefaction or your liquefying of the eyes. Do it too much and you will cause a major degradation of the eyes. So let me show you an example. So you see that. Now, you can see kind of a fuzziness right there in the eyes and then you take it away. Do it again. And you can see as you bring that up, as you pull that eye up, you degrade the edges in the eye there, okay? Now that's significant because if we do it too much, we start to get blurry eyes. Now there's some things that we can do at the end to bring sharpness back into the eyes. I'm not gonna cover that on this tutorial today. If you're interested, email me, let me know that you're interested and maybe I'll uh, create something on that. But so you wanna make sure that you liquefy minimally, all right? Not only will liquefying minimally reduce the amount of uh, degradation that you get in your image, but it will also add to the realism that you, uh, you know, create in the expression. So it's all about making sure that we emphasize the expression, but we don't make it unrealistic and we don't degrade the image too much, all right? So with this guy here, what we can see is, uh, his eyebrows are going up here on the edges and down here in the middle, all right? So I kind of want to emphasize that. Also, with his mouth here, and I know this is an eyes tutorial, liquefying eyes, but I'm also going to liquefy his mouth just a little bit to give it more emphasis because I like what he's doing there with his, with his uh, mouth. So here's the key, right? So we're going to bring this up just a little bit, just like that, and we're going to bring this down just a little bit, just like that. 
Same thing here, just a little bit. And I like how this eye is going up here. So we're going to bring that out. And if you liquefy in just small amounts, just tiny little amounts, that helps reduce, reduce that degradation. All right, so now we have the eyes there on the top. Now the thing is, here's the key to making this thing realistic. Now this looks good and this would sell. Uh, this is believable, that type of thing. All right, but now we wanna make this really realistic. All right, say that three times really fast. Real, realistic, really, really realistic. All right, so anyway, um, the way you do that is anytime that you open your eyes or you tell somebody to uh, raise their eyebrows, if you say big eyes, which is something I always say to clients when I'm working with them on a portrait, uh, you'll hear me frequently if you're watching a, a photo shoot of mine, big eyes, give me big eyes, big, big, big eyes. You know, I'm always going over big eyes. And so anytime that you ask somebody to make big eyes, you know, where they raise their eyebrows, you can't help but your eyes to open. So that pulls down the lower lid as well. So we also want to pull down this lower lid just a little bit, you know, just a little bit, just like that. All right. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just like that. All right. So that makes his eyes a little bit bigger, even bigger than when I was telling him big eyes. All right. So that emphasizes his eyes and we're all programmed neurologically to the eyes first and then facial features second. So anytime that you tell somebody to make big eyes or to open their eyes or to raise their eyebrows, you can't help but every other feature in the face to follow suit. So now just real quick on his mouth, I like the way his mouth is, but I think we can make it even better and just emphasize it just a little bit. All right, so you can see that I'm going bigger and smaller on my brush stroke here, just like that. And then I can bring his uh, chin down just a little bit. And you can see every time I do this, it degrades the image just a small little bit. And I want, and I don't want my image to be degraded too much. And then bring his jaw line up here just a little bit. And that will also help emphasize the mouth. So, there's what we got. So this is the difference here. We got before the liquefaction, before liquefying his face, after liquefying his face, before, after. So you can see a big difference there in the before and the after of his face. Now at this point, I would cut him out and I would start doing my burn and dodge and my shaping, work on the eyes. And then at the very end, at the very end, after I'd done the, my colorizing and other things, I would also sharpen the eyes back up uh, to make sure that they still look good. Okay. All right. So let's go to Henry here. Henry is a, also a, another really good one. So he's got a good big expression on his face. Really doesn't need a lot of liquefying, but... We're in the liquefying business today, so we're going to liquefy this bad boy. All right, so we're going to bring him up here. I like bringing the eye or the subject up really close in my frame. So just look at this structure of his eyes here. So we got the structure of his eye here, and it goes up. It peaks out right there above his pup or his uh, iris there. Same thing there, and then his eyebrow pulls up. His eyebrow pulls up. So we're going to emphasize that, all right? So we can come in here, emphasize his eye just a little bit. Bring it up just a little bit. Same thing with the other side, just a little bit. And you don't want to get down into the eye too much. You don't want to drag that up. You want to, if you can keep that sharp, then you're doing a lot better than if we come in here and we just pull the whole thing up like that. That You can see a major degradation in the image right there, so... Uh, just try to make sure that you stay right on the lid there. Okay, so now we're going to do the uh, eyebrows here. Good. Bring that up. Good. And now, because we want to keep this thing realistic, we're going to come down and do right below or the lower lid here. Just like that. Just like that. Cool. Cool. And now we're going to open this way up. We're going to really pull that cheek back. And then run it down here just a little bit. And we're going to pull this cheek back. 
and then we want to bring that back and we want to bring this up just a little bit doing these things with the jawline like this or the uh, cheek line like this a lot of times will emphasize the work that you're doing on the mouth and the eyes and really when you're looking at a picture especially like the ones I do with with such big characters and expressions on their face I really want to emphasize the eyes first the nose and the mouth all right when families look at these when they look at their portraits the first thing they always look at are the eyes the nose and the mouth and also hands and feet if those are showing as well so that's where I always focus. So that's what we've done there. And so we've got our before and our after. Before, after. Now just in doing that, of course I've enlarged the head just a little bit, but just in doing that, look how sharp the eyes are there. And then look how it degrades in the liquefied version of this. So you see a definite degradation. So you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. This might be just a tiny bit overdone however I can still bring out good detail in the eyes with some other things that I would do with this little guy all right so let's go to Titan the Great Dane all right so we're going over here so we got a dog now so that we can do the same thing on dogs that we could on people all right they have the same things happening with their eyes where it goes up in certain areas their eyebrow here you can see how it comes up and then the lower part, and then same thing over here. And then we can work on even the mouth on this guy to emphasize the eye. So let's make a copy here so we can do a before and after comparison. Uh, we're gonna go up here to filter, liquify, and that will bring us into our liquefying window. Let's bring him all the way up here. All right, so I'm gonna keep this a little bit small here just so I can work on that eyelid we're going to bring that eyelid up and then we can bring up that brow and we can give titan here <clears throat> titan here either a surprised more of a surprised look on his face or we can give him more of a shocked look on his face we can actually uh, alter sometimes the actual expression that they have on their face and while i don't like altering the expression necessarily i do like emphasizing it so we want to bring down Titan's little eye there, eyelid here. And then what I would do with Titan is I would also increase, give his nose just a little bump up there. And then I like what is happening here with his jowl. So I'll bring that down just a little bit. You can either bring that down, bring it up, it doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna bring this guy in here just a little bit. Just a little bit, just like that. I'm just messing around right now. I wouldn't, I don't know that I actually did any of this on Titan. All right, so let's say okay. And let's look at it before and after. So you can see a difference and he looks a little bit more surprised on the after there. So that's kind of funny. Anyway. You can kind of get a good idea of uh, how to use liquefying in the eyes. A couple of things here real quick before I end this video is uh, I get asked a lot of questions about the expressions. How do I get the expressions on their face? And as you can see, actually, in these few samples that I showed you, a good expression can't be liquefied. It has to start with a good expression. So you start with a good expression. And that all comes into play when you're actually photographing your subjects and making sure that they emote the way you want them to and as big as you want them to. The bigger, the better. It's never big enough because then you can bring it into Photoshop and add these small little tweaks to it and details. They will never, ever, ever notice that this has been altered. All right. To them, in their brains, in their eyes, this is what they look like when they make that expression. All right, so you're just kind of making them look like they think they already look. All right, so uh, it all starts with a good expression. Creating a good expression starts with having a good expression. Also, you want to make sure that you, when you liquefy the eyes, you minimize the amount of liquefaction or liquefying that you do to the eyes to minimize the degradation of the image. Uh, while there are some techniques that you can use to 
bring back some detail in the eyes afterwards, you want to really reduce the amount of that as, as much as possible. All right, in my kind of, uh, my style of photography, it's almost guaranteed that if you have any kind of expression like this, that your eyes and mouth and face will have some liquefying in them. I will use Photoshop to liquefy uh, just about 100% of the time with an expression like this. So I have to know how to bring back detail. It's very, very important that you bring that detail back in the eyes, especially when you're blowing these suckers up to, you know, 50, 60 inches to hang on a wall. And then thirdly, you want to minimize your liquefying uh, primarily to create more realism. If you do it too much, it actually looks like it's been altered and kind of fake. And you don't want your subjects, uh, if you're doing like a portrait like I am, uh, if it's commercial, you, know, you probably have a little bit more leeway on that. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on the client. But uh, for a personal portrait like this, you want to make sure that it's as realistic as possible. So you want to minimize the amount of liquefying and not make it too much to look like they're emoting too much or something that's just not realistically. And then also make sure that you get that bottom eyelid and you pull that down just a little bit to add that extra little special amount of realism that most people miss when they're liquefying the eyes. So anyway, that's how I liquefy the eyes and make them realistic. Starts with a good expression, minimize liquefying to reduce degradation of the image and li minimize liquefying to make it more realistic and pull down, pull down that bottom lid. All right, so make sure you do that and then you guys go out, try this out, you know, try it a couple times, try it on some different people, uh, you know, maybe try it on you. You take a self-portrait, emote really big, and then put yourself in Photoshop and try Legofy and see how you like. And then try that out. Let me know how it works in the comments below if you have any other suggestions or if you have any other videos that you'd like to see me create uh, on what I do and how I do it. Just leave it in the comments below and I'd be happy to work on that for you. Next, and so I will see you next time on Photillustrator TV. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Let me have one more drink of coffee here. Ah, that's good. Good coffee.